So now if, if you're just joining us on YouTube and if you're watching this video, this is where you're just joining us, you've missed about two minutes, I guess so, or there are three or four minutes, whatever, of exciting content that you will only get to see on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. So you have to go over there, you have to like the page, and you have to be on it to see is daily when it's live. It's live on Mondays. It's live like between 9 and 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. But Tuesday through Thursday, since I have more reliable co-host on those days it's at 9 p.m eastern standard time i know i'm inspired oh what is that did you break your finger again did it get it stuck in that position that's an unfortunate position for your finger to it lock is. up and it he is. suffers from the old man arthritis so you have to you have to give him a pass on that so welcome to is daily monday i'm paul gordon and this is what? Professor what? Rambo. You're just gonna point you people are gonna like Dude. Oh yeah, he's pointing the finger. I knew who that is. That's Professor Rambo. I like, recommend It's like okay. the Prince Squiggle. You know, it's oh, like that's right. that guy. <laughs> the 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 mm, mm, formerly known as Professor Rambo. <laughs> so I, I think I think we're gonna dive right into our first story here. Let's let's, let's hit do our that. first segment. And our first segment, of course, is It's Full Auto. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to enter a gun-filled zone. Don't let yourself be triggered by the sound of Full Auto news about guns for gun supporters. Yes. Did you like that? In Did you like you, you got to hear the bump, by the way. My co-hosts have not heard all the bumps or everything during the show because I had that's new issue. But my co-host on Thursday, the one true, or on Wednesday, the one true news, he sat with me after the show and he walked me through figuring out. So you got to hear the full auto bump. So congratulations. So now you know we are in full auto land, and I feel a little nervous because I'm flying blind here because I was hoping to see your little spreadsheet thing before the show but all i got was it's not ready oh it's ready it so, is ready and so it, go look, ahead. I can, okay it, it comes down to this Time to when, when you're picking a caliber you have to define what you're using it for and when you're picking a handgun assuming you're this is a conversation about concealed carry you have to define what it's for now, if this conversation were about going to battle, that changes the parameters. If it's for home defense, it changes the parameters. If it's for concealed carry, it changes the parameters. If it's a car gun, it changes the parameters. But there's one underlying thing. And I, let me let me back up and, for a second. Watch that crinkling. Watch that crinkling. That is terrible. Yeah, that right there. I don't know why I told you that. <laughs> the moment I told you that, I should have known there was going to be more of that, obviously. So, um, watching YouTube videos, uh, there are lots and lots of them out there saying, you know, is the 40 cal dead? Is it a dead cartridge? And um, uh, I've given some advice to friends about, you know, if you're going to conceal carry, some options, if you're going to choose ammo, options, uh, if you're going to use it for home defense, options. And every time they go to the wait, range wait, to try... Wait, I have to interrupt you. Could you say sure. options again? Sure, options. Nice. And so when they go to the range, everyone's like, oh my God, why would you choose that round? You should choose the 9mm. The feds chose the 9mm. The army chose the 9mm. The police forces are all in droves converting to the nine millimeter oh dude the nine millimeter and its new configurations and its new offerings with new powders and new technologies and new this and new that oh the nine millimeter will do everything a 357 magnum will do wait what a nine millimeter will do anything a, a 40 nine cal millimeter yeah what okay, anything well they're saying you seriously that seriously heard this on more than one I'm, forum. Are you being hyperbolic? 
No. Did you not hear at all. this like once and you turned it into no. multiple times? No, no, no. I've heard it three so times from three different sources. People. There are three well, people at least, three people on this planet at least, that are walking around with this phrase in their head, assuming it's true. The nine millimeter can do everything the three fifty seven Magnum can do. It's Folks, just as good. If you're listening Not out there on TV, do everything, line, but it's just as good. It's just as good as the three fifty seven Sig. It's just as good as the forty cal. It's just as good as a forty five. And I'm thinking, wait, what? So then I start seeing videos where people are addressing these comments and just completely ridiculing them. Good. That this is good. Uh, this, yeah, well, of course, faith in but humanity my friend, restored. But my friend, who's a newbie in the gun ownership area, is listening to these guys at the range who are like range officers and like uh, safety course instructors who are saying similar things. And so I said. That's impossible. The numbers don't lie. So I went in and I and I, last week you had told me about this new, fantastically awesome cartridge. Going to uh, change the world. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's impressive. And then you sent me a video of it shooting through Type 3 body armor. And I was like, oh, my God. That's a nine millimeter punching right through Type Three body armor. This which, is which it did, which is very impressive. It certainly did. And so when I'm looking at the numbers, I was like, "Wow, this is crazy! These numbers are crazy. That this is a game changer." I can't wait to see what it does with other calibers. And so I started to, as a little spreadsheet to compare it to other manufacturers. And just to see what's what. Because we, we immediately discovered there were a couple of calibers that we even, uh, looked at right away. And we thought, hey, there's there's really no, no gain on this one. Well, not only That's was what, there no gain, but there were some significant loss. Yeah. No, not a little, a lot. The 40 cal lost a fair amount, it's, and the 357 Magnum was like, wait, why would you bother? Um, so having done my little spreadsheet here, my initial assumptions that the 9 millimeter is a marginal cartridge, um, I have to say, has been reinforced. Um, the nine millimeter has always been like 360 pound foot to like 400 pound foot of energy at the muzzle. And now with the new powders and the new plus P ammo and a lot of the new guns that can handle the plus P ammo, now you're getting into like 400, 450, 475 pound foot which is still very much short of just the 40 cal. So when I hear people saying the 40 cal is dead, I said, I have to think to myself, are these people stupid? And these are some people who I kind of respect. It's like, what are you basing this on? And what they're basing it on is egghead stuff. Like, well, the ammo's cheap. Well, you know, so I can target practice. Listen, buddy, not everybody's at the range. Not everybody's at the range on a daily basis shooting 500 rounds. At most, a guy, if he's lucky, he's going to be at the range once a month shooting 200 rounds through this thing, through his firearm, not 500 rounds a day. The cost of ammo is inconsequential if, it, if that gun doesn't fit you properly, if it doesn't do what you've purchased it for, uh, right. whether it's... So with, so let's so, get to your study before well, the show is over. Right. So my <laughs> – so look, the bottom line for me is this. And this is the way that I, I, I'm starting to look at firearms in general. You take the firearm that, you are, that you've chosen and you determine its capacity, which is, you know, a predetermined number. 
um, and you multiply that by the pound foot by the cartridge that you've chosen and that gives you a total let's say for the 45 ACP the average pound foot that I got at five different cartridges was 551 almost 552 pound foot as an average but the average uh, 1911 shoots about eight rounds so 552 times 8 gives you a, a gross number of 4,414 pound foot downrange. That's a lot of energy going downrange. That's range. good. That's a good right. number. That's a very good number. As, but when uh, you, as, that, as that Paul guy, what's that? What's his last name? The, the oh, gun guy? Paul. Oh, Paul Harrell. Paul, Paul Harrell. Harrell would say... Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> That's what he says. He but fires when you every everything he fires, he says, not too bad. Anyway, sorry. But when you compare that to a 10 millimeter that can shoot 12 rounds and its average pound foot is 673, now you're at 8,081 pound foot that you're sending down range that's almost double the 45 and it's a combination of more pound foot or foot pounds sorry and yeah, more capacity foot pounds down range and and capacity so then you say well what about something that's not as powerful as the as the 10 millimeter let's go down to the 40 cal well an average 40 cal now will shoot 12 rounds that you can find 40 cows will shoot 15 rounds a lot of the 96 berettas will only shoot 10 or 11 12 rounds at the most but its average pound foot is 507 but because of its extended capacity of 12 it exceeds the 45 acp by a lot by almost by a lotters yeah so it's up at 6093 pound foot that it's sending downrange or foot pounds. What do I always mix? Now, what up? I said to you pounds. before while you were doing this was, uh, you're factoring in there. You got foot pounds, but you know which calibers will and which types. It's not just calibers; it's types of bullets because there's different. Correct. Obviously, Are you shooting different plus properties P? According. Right. Yeah. Are you shooting, if you're plus, shooting P? plus P? There's different manufacturers that are that produce different results like that. Was it that Liberty? What was it called? Liberty Civil Defense. So Liberty Civil Defense, what they've done is they've removed the lead and they've produced a significantly lighter bullet. And so the trade-off is you the, the grains are a lot lower, but the speed is a lot higher and and but but the translation doesn't always work. For some bullets, the loss in grainage is not made up with in speed. For others, it is a really profound effect. So to get right into the Liberty plus P, um, its foot pounds are 450, but that little bullet is traveling. At, it's a 50 grain bullet traveling at 2000 feet per second. Right. And, and that's I've seen some that got it up to 2300. So, yeah, but that's pretty that impressive, lies. right? Okay. This is well, like Tokarov kind of stuff. Correct. But now when you look at Corbon plus P with a hundred grain, this is a bullet that's twice as heavy, um, only going f only <laughs> going 1475 foot, uh, feet per second, that actually has more right. pound foot or foot pounds but at the 472. One, I keep coming back though to that one point. I talked about accuracy. So you got foot pounds flying down range. And then there's a question of which bullets fly straighter fly flatter the faster bullets gonna fly flatter so for me even if i'm gonna lose a little if it's if it's that much faster i'm i'm figuring uh well maybe at short ranges it's not gonna matter but at longer ranges the accuracy is gonna come into play and so now it's not just foot pounds down range it's foot pounds that i could i could realistically with relative ease not having not not requiring a high skill get the foot pounds on target 
it's not just down so, range. It's on target. Well, and, and the other component is the lighter the bullet, the less recoil. And that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Um, but for those of us who are not recoil sensitive, to go to 9 millimeter instead of like a 10 millimeter or a 45 or a 40, uh, I mean, it is nuts because the average 40 has over 500 foot pounds and the average 9 millimeter is at 384. That is a huge huge compromise because I did three plus P's or actually two plus P's and, and three non plus P uh, cartridges for the nine millimeter. And, and don't forget if you're going to, if you're looking at something like uh, 147 grain uh, Hornady uh, in a nine millimeter, that thing's going to recoil. It's going to recoil substantially. And yeah, so and I, the, the and advantages that say... you have, I did want to say something real quick about your your if you're used to recoil. Okay, you may be used to recoil, but it's still hard to control that that rise. So even if you're used to it, that rise does slow down your next shot on target. So if you have True. less of a rise, you're going to get uh, rounds off faster. You're going to get back on target a lot faster. Yes, but three let's say the average for the 9 millimeter is 380 right and the average for a 40 cal is 508 well we know that the 40 cal is a fight stopper uh statistically speaking it's been pretty well proven that one or two shots of 40 cal and the fight has stopped and it, the objective of that cartridge was to become a fight stopper like the 357 magnum had been and the nine millimeter we know is not a fight stopper people get shot with nine millimeter repeatedly and they keep going they and don't even keep if going. they don't survive they still get a lot of stuff done before they die correct 357 magnum stuff. 357 magnum with its foot pounds at 570 on average and a high of like 700 up in the 10 millimeter range and it's pretty much a dead knockoff of this 10 millimeter in terms of capability depending on what you load in it uh you're limited to six shots but dude if you connect with one or two the fight is over so the more i thought about this the more i realized that in the early days of firearms, people were shooting like 80 caliber handguns and rifles. And you say 80 caliber, that's crazy. You got one shot with this thing. And if you're taking a shot at somebody and you got only one shot, you want to push as much energy downrange as you can physically uh carry and hold and 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 use in terms of the firearm so in case you do hit him or if you miss him you hit his buddy behind him if you're in open battle you, you that one cartridge has to take out as many individuals downrange as possible so again you're trying to push downrange as much energy as possible right as guns became more or easier to load and reload and automated and, or automatic whether it was from you know uh, uh, muzzle loaders to breech loaders to to uh, as the rate of fire increased thank you as the rate of fire increased the the caliber doesn't need to be as high but you still are looking to send as much energy downrange as possible so you have to compare what the caliber can do with the capacity of the firearm you have and i would say if you're not between three and five thousand pound foot or foot pounds downrange uh you don't have an adequate self-defense handgun and if you're not over five thousand 
pound foot again foot pounds sending Whatever down range yeah you poundage. get that poundage out there man get that poundage down if you're not over five you don't have an adequate uh firearm cartridge combination for battle and the nine millimeter in my opinion is woefully short for battle and mediocre at best for for uh self-defense having said that i do carry nine millimeter so there nine millimeter is adequate in most situations in which you're dealing with a threat from one individual at close range anything beyond that and i question the viability of the nine millimeter if you got an individual at close range and you unload on them five, six shots real quick and and aiming is not, I mean, they're close enough that uh, aiming is not necessarily a huge requirement. Uh, you're going to put them down. And most people, see, most people, I will say in most situations, what you're going to have is the, uh, the, the what's, what's that uh, ASP say that... Uh, armed self-protection guy <coughs> he has this acronym i forget what it is but it's but it's basically it's oh crap i've just been hit and it totally alters the person it changes their trajectory puts them in a defensive mode that's the way most people are going to be but if you got hardcore people coming your way yeah that's not going to be so much of a factor so i i still believe like nine millimeter is not what i that's not my go-to gun for home defense, I'll just say. But just going to the grocery store and doing my EDC, and I'm not going in a place where I feel particularly at risk for, like, multiple attackers. Of course, that could happen anywhere, but it's a lot less likely in some places uh, as opposed to other places. I feel, I feel pretty secure with the 9 and with the type of gun that, I would choose to carry that I can, because of the nine being a smaller caliber, I can get a sizable amount of rounds in a small package that's easily concealable. So the nine still has its place. It certainly does. But I believe strongly that when the, when law, the law enforcement community is switching to nine millimeter, it's going to cost police officers lives because they're going to shoot bad that, guys. Don't, don't. Don't do it. What, if they're going to shoot, we're going to talk about next week. Oh. We oh. next week. That's a teaser. Next week, we're going to. Uh, this is your theory, not mine. I think it's a brilliant theory. Uh, what, I, I, if I didn't respond to you, I, I thought it was great. It's a brilliant theory. I think I may be biased because I somewhat like this guy a little bit. Um, I'm not like gay like though, so don't get excited. But this theory that we're going to tease and we're going to cover in next week's fall au full auto is a rather interesting theory of why, why did they choose the nine millimeter? It might not be as, as, as innocent as you think, but I will say this in closing before we get to our world segment or I world segment for me, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I do think that the, at, at the nine level at the, for the nine millimeter, that Liberty, what's it called? Liberty defense or, Civil defense. Liberty civil defense. I think that liberty civil defense, that's, I'm going to get that. I, that's going to be my, my everyday carry round. That, that significantly ups the ante for me. Now, am I going to call my, 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 my little nine a battle pistol, even with that caliber? No, 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 no. But I suddenly feel a lot better about the kind of power that I have in a small package with that round because at the nine millimeter level, that's, that's enough. What they've done there is very effective for the nine millimeter. So I think the nine millimeter is at the bottom of the self-defense yes, cartridges. I'll, I'll um, say this, I'll say this, and then I'll let you give your closing remarks on this segment. Uh, my friend Mitch has a Tokarov. I always wanted a Tokarov. I feel like I'm entering Tokarov zone with that particular cartridge from the Liberty Civil Defense. It's like the nine is now entered the Tokarov zone. Correct. Um, which, is, which is impressive. Um, but for home defense, 
No. There, there are cartridges that are new and recently engineered with the new powders, the new guns, the new metal, metallurgy that are far superior to the 9mm. The 357 SIG is off the charts impressive. It does what the 357 Magnum was designed to do, which was to be a man stopper. The 40 cal is a man stopper. The 10 yeah, millimeter is a stop man that. stopper. The 45 and the 9 millimeter are from a hundred years ago, if you can believe that. They're they're outdated cartridges, and I they and I'm a traditionalist. Place. They they most certainly did, and as a traditionalist. And I'm I like, wow, 45, those are so. those are great cartridges, but they're not ideal for self defense. And, and like I said, I don't always carry a 40 or or a 10 mil or a 357 sig. Sometimes all the room I've got in my shorts is for a nine millimeter or a 32, and I'll take what I can get. And I'll take a nine millimeter, like if, if I can fit it into my jacket pocket uh, over nothing. Because a high point is better than a brick. Oh, wait, no, a high point is a brick. Well, maybe not. <laughs> but I really want to get back to, to the introduction to next week's show. And I don't want, I'm not going to give it away. Okay, but don't I am going to say, I'm not. I just want to reemphasize that being able to send more rounds downrange isn't necessarily a good thing if you're a cop. You want to send down the right amount of power to stop an intruder or a, an assailant with the first shot and a cop who should be practicing on a weekly day basis and qualifying regularly should be and typically are very good with 40 cows and for them to be switching back to nines i think is a huge mistake and next week we'll talk about some theories about why that might be happening mm. on that note let, let's let's head on to iWorld because we have uh, we have a, a Catalonia two. That's what I'll call it. Yo, my people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, well, we'll wait. I'm from the island. Too. I'm sort of from the island below okay, them. Okay, hold on. Let's get the bump out. All right. What are the stories that more fully reveal the unfolding reality of power at a global level? Well, that's what iWorld is for. So get ready to look behind the global curtain to see who's really pulling the levers. Did you hear that bump? Was that what I was expecting like a two minute bump, dude? No. Lucky you didn't catch me bumps. picking my nose. I did. <laughs> you know what? If I ever if I get you on video picking your nose, I think that I may create one of them ten hour YouTube loop videos. Of you just looping like that for ten hours, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. And now Is this, this next story, th th this next story kind of touched. Well, there's there's two stories, but they're really one, but they're about the same thing. But this next story, it it it, it strikes close to home for you because uh, you being Italian and all. <laughs> <laughs> but these people are supposed to be French, not Italians. Well, I mean, really. I mean, they're they're in the vicinity, man. They're like, where's Corsica at? And like Sardinia. They're like right near each other, right? Corsica is between – Corsica and Sardinia are between Italy and, and France. And Corsica is just north of Sardinia. I know this because it's genetically imprinted in me. Because so. he is Sardinian. So, uh, Part, and, like 12%. 12% Sardinian. Sardinian. And – 52 percent italian and you, hey just out of curiosity greek speaking man that you are you're greek orthodox as well oh good good way to represent um what percentage greek are you <laughs> oh that's easy joe mama <laughs> i think it's is it three <laughs> percent what is it no, I'm three percent Jewish. He's more. I'm more Neanderthal than he is Greek. <laughs> that makes me Neanderthal, right? Well, that if you're that Greek, I'm lot. Neanderthal. So, I am five percent Greek according to this. Oh, you missed test. it by one. Okay, you're a little bit more Greek than I am. I'm four percent Neanderthal. So. so, this story is about Corsica, and. There's really two stories here. Let me make sure I get these in the right order. 
Okay. Okay. So first story is this. France prepares for Corsican push for autonomy from Paris. So the French, they're trying to head off another potential regional secessionist movement, secessionist, secessionist movement on the order of, of what's been seen in Catalonia. Now, the region in question is Corsica. It's, a, it's an island, if you remember. Is, is that where Napoleon is from? Is he from Corsica? No, he was or, banished to Corsica. Banished to Corsica. I knew there was some. And then he ended up in Elba. Ere I saw Elba. I think that's a palindrome or whatever. Abel was I, ere I saw Elba. That is a palindrome. It means it's the same forward and backwards. Like Bob. Bob is a palindrome. <laughs> you know what's not a, a palindrome? Greek. The word Greek. You know who's not Greek? <laughs> you. <laughs> jo, jo mama? Although, in the genetic testing, maybe she is. <laughs> That's true. You never know. So, so Macron, he went to Corsica. This already happened. This happened last week. Went to Corsica for a two-day visit in an effort to nip the Corsican autonomy movement in the bud. I'm not sure how a visit from Macron is going to be like, oh, 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 wait, we're seeing this. Uh, is it I'm Macron or Ma Macron? Macron? Macron. I thought it was Macron. How do you pronounce his name? Macron. Ma I thought it was you know, Macron. Um, he, he's, yeah, he, he, he's very much like the, you know, he's kind of soft and ooey gooey like uh, the Canadian, you know, like Trudeau. the French army. He's, he's like Trudeau. Well, you yeah, said like the, the French, French army is pretty hardcore. The, well, the French uh, Foreign Legion. Yeah, the French Foreign Legion is pretty hardcore. The but French the Special French Forces army. are pretty hardcore. The hey, French the way, Army, hey, they're good hey, pastry hey, makers. By the, hey, by the way, um, the, the French Army may very well be the strongest army on the European continent. And I'm not going to count Russia. I'm going to count Russia as kind of Eurasian. It might be, and, and, and like I said, on the continent. I'm not counting the British British Army, British military, uh, because it's certainly not Germany. <laughs> Germany recently, they they released a, a, a statement that they, they can't send any more German naval vessels on any kind of... Uh, missions because essentially the german navy is inoperable it's they don't even have parts to fix they they created new frigates and they can't bring them online because they don't have enough parts to complete them that's the status of germany but well, i digress i digress well the 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 thing that's happened in germany is the germans are desperate to compete economically and they have completely sold out the rest of their country for economic gains. They're, because they, sold they got out. the United States umbrella over them. Correct. So they have spent nothing in military, and they have not been hardening their sons very much. Um, no. No, they're, they're not the same Germans of World War II. And I'm grateful for that. Kind of. Kind yeah, of a good thing, of, but let's say they're not of. the Prussians of 1870. Yeah, they're not them either, right? Or they're either. definitely not the Prussians of 1870, which, right. you know, the Prussians of 1870 uh, kind of, maybe even not indirectly, maybe directly led to the, uh, the school systems that you have in America today. So screw the Prussians! I know my brother, he loves the Prussians, but I said it. I so said it. I think you're right. In saying that France would probably walk through Germany in about a week or two without yeah. very much resistance. And when I say walk, I mean, you know, literally. at a literally walk, like at a normal pace, not leisurely like drug. pace. Yes, leisurely. So uh, the Russians, I would give, the Russians I give would Russians. only be limited by the speed with which they can move their material. That's it. That's the only thing impeding them is travel time. How fast can Russia take over Germany? How fast can they fly? Pretty and, much. And compared to the American military, the Russians are in very bad shape. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Putin, right. Putin is kind of rebuilding the Russian military, and he's been doing a much better job than the last 
couple of buffoons that were in there. Um, but seriously, compared to the American military, it's not even close. So the fact that the the Russians could walk through Germany in a couple of days. Oh, my God. What does it say about Germany and the rest of Europe? Germany is because do you ever hear of uh, what was it called? Oh, the mouse mouse utopia. Oh, you've mentioned this? that. Yes. The experiment they, where they took these mice and they basically they they created everything that they needed. They they didn't have a want or a care, and and their society, their mouse society, pretty quickly degenerated and became non-productive. They stopped breeding. That it it went to hell uh, real quick. And then there were there were some elite mice. I think they called them the beautiful ones, something like that. They were the they 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 groom themselves all the time. All they did was lay around and groom themselves and make them look pretty. They weren't interesting and interested in in uh, doing it with each other. And then the lower classes of mice, the ones that uh, didn't become the beautiful ones, they they kind of become real barbaric and they kind of turned on each other. But they were they were soft and gushy. So Germany is like that mouse utopia, except it's the United States of America that made Germany mouse utopia because it created this awesome, powerful defense umbrella over Germany. And Germany abdicated its responsibilities to defend itself, to even it, have that it makes, mindset. It makes good hardware. I mean, it makes really good hardware. But uh, the people behind it are a little too intellectual and, and not enough uh, get up and go. Um, yeah, they're get up, go, go, gone. They're get up, yeah. gone. As, so, as in the, the mouse, whatever it's called, mouse utopia. But you see, you have, you have areas like Catalonia and Corsica and like northern Italy and other parts of Europe that are, are sitting there going, why do I want to be part of these idiots? They don't represent my interests. I, I guarantee you they're in Corsica, there is a very masculine machismo kind of culture there. That's like these French, they're frou frou. They're, they're not who we are. We don't want to be part of those losers. The Corsicans, like couch, you mean. Yeah, yes. They're couch potatoes and they're leftists and they're they're soft and squishy and and they're all cultured and they're city boys, and that's not who we are. We're we're our own men. We don't want to be part of that bullshit. Yeah, so we don't want to be emasculated. I, I yeah. guarantee you, there's a, a very strong element in the in the ultra nationalistic uh, separatist movements around Europe and around the world that are rejecting the feminization of the culture. Got a picture there uh, behind you. You can't see it, but uh, it's the Corsicans, and they're they're marching through the streets dressed up in like Napoleonic gear, which kind of speaks for itself. There, based kind of what what Professor Rambo is talking about there. So there was a follow up, and uh, you saw within Corsica there are these. Uh, these cut Corsicans and one of these cut Corsicans. Uh, apparently, what happened was in Corsica, a nationalist party in Corsica won, and now they 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 rule their their governing body, their their parliament. And uh, one of the one of the one one of the Corsican cucks, if you will, that had previously been in power, uh, screamed at, at one of the nationalists, "You will always be free." And and yeah, got booed off. Wait, what did he scream at him? You will always be French. Oh, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so and did so he get slapped? That. And did he get slapped like the no. little cock? Yeah, he is. And then this this guy says, "There's a red line that cannot be crossed. Corsica is and always will be French." Now this is a 
Frenchman now speaking. We've seen what happens in Catalonia, and so we know full well that the issue of greater autonomy is one we need to follow slow, slow, closely. So they're like, "You ain't gonna Catalonia us, brother. We're gonna send. We're gonna send our our soft faced doughboy Macron to Corsica, and that's gonna nip this in the bud. That's gonna calm things down." I don't think that's 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 how it works. I think another thing that you're seeing in in general with these secessionist movements is these large scale scale enterprises, they have to take more and more from the provinces, so to speak. And they're giving less and less back to the provinces. And what they're taking in is more and more staying in the large metropolitan centers of the seats of power of these large uh large scale operations if you will and and the periphery is like dude we're sick of this it's like that's why like most of california well not i mean geographically there's a movement for most of california to secede from from the metropolitan the tiny little metropolitan strip of california that dominates the provinces and the provinces didn't have a problem with it when they were getting back or at least if they were perceiving that they were getting back more than they were giving but now it, it's not like that it's it, they, well they're, they're there's taking another more dynamic more. too and and that other dynamic is that the leftists in these urban centers have been bringing in illegal immigrants to vote for them and oh, right and the people in the periphery see that the leftists who are ruling over their country are being put there by people to, who don't even belong in the country who are voting on have no connection on the, to the, on history, the native the people's or yeah but, and they they're voting on behalf of themselves but now are representing the native peoples there too with their choices and the natives are like screw this if you guys are going to keep bringing these illegals in we don't want to be part of this anymore screw you i'm out screw you guys I can't. well That's, you know i'm actually that was my cartman by the way yeah. uh i'm proud of the corsicans i'm proud of the catalonians i'm proud of any group that sees that they're being exploited which is what's happening here and says, screw you. I'm not going to be part of this anymore. You, you want to come take my stuff? Come on. Come and try to take it. I, I just want to add this comment. It's totally unrelated to what we're talking about. This is from Larry, my my resident state of state face friend. Larry, I love you, even though you're a horrible human being. And you know it. Uh, Larry says, silly. Nine millimeter is perfectly fine for self-defense. He's just a contrarian. You know what? I got to get a call in line when set up. I have Larry call in. When when the Fed switch back to 40 or they go to a 357 SIG or or even a newer cartridge, uh, he's going to be right in line. He's like, oh, my God, the Feds, they're, they're switching to this caliber because it's the most awesomest thing ever. Well, that would make sense because he's, you know, whatever the state says, Larry's in line. Larry's like, oh, of course. Yeah. whatever, whatever hey, Larry says. Wait till next week's show. Yes, wait till next week's show. You're gonna, you're gonna enjoy that. On that note, why don't we get to our last segment here? Are you ready? I'm I ready. mean, we really only scratched the surface of the whole secessionist thing, but I'm sure it's gonna come up in multiple stories. In oh, it's gonna keep so. coming up. Yeah, it's gonna keep coming up. We're not done talking about what's behind secessionism and well, and all that. And there's gonna be all sorts of movements all over the world. It's already started in India and in China, uh, throughout Europe, Latin America. There's there's all sorts of movements underfoot, and the powers yeah, that be see see this and they're like, how do we control this? And bring I in some that, immigrants. Yeah, and I yeah, right, right. Bring in some immigrants. Uh, they're going to run out of immigrants eventually. <laughs> or, or what's going to happen is some of them immigrants are going to be like, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I think I'm just going to stay here. It's not as bad. Yeah. It's not too bad here, really. <laughs> There's bombs like going off everywhere. Yeah, but have you been in Paris? Stanks. Stanking up in there. So uh, we're going to get to our, our last segment here. And our last segment. Do you know what our last swing is? Segment? Swagment? Not a freaking clue. It's eye prepper. 
Hi Prepper is our last segment. Come on, dude. Now we're going to be talking. Uh, I Prepper, do you put that in your chili? What's that? I Prepper, do I you prepper? put that? Do you sprinkle you that in that, your chili? You, you darn well better, because that's how you make it through the the apocalypto. Is you put that uh, I Prepper in your chili, and then you you sleep right through the apocalypto. You wake up on the other side of it, and everything's fine. So oh yeah, yeah that would be great. Absolutely. All right. We're going to hit our, on the other side of the eye prepper bump, we're going to be talking calibers again, except this time oh. we're going to be talking about it, dude, we're going to be talking about it from the perspective of what calibers should you hoard and why for an SHTF. Be the power you hope to see, and that means being prepared to provide as much as possible yourself and your loved ones with basic necessities. Welcome to iPrepper. Get ready to be prepared. Man, I swear, during the bump, I watched Professor Rambo pick his nose, find a booger, and eat it. I saw that. I'm not saying I'm lying. I might not be telling the truth, but I saw that. So, so. What are you, like five years old? What do, you, what do you care? You're just an Italian. You, you know, don't care about anything like that. I have a hair. If you were in Greek, my I'd respect you more. I have a hair in my whiskers, or a whisker in my hairs, and it's turned up, and it's just tickling the inside of my nose. It's driving me nuts. That's terrible. It's uh, Oh, I hate that, though. You get a hair up in there. Oh. No matter how hard you try, you just can't, you just gotta can't get, get them, rid of it. Got to get them skizzers out. You know, do a little chip chip away or tip, tip yeah. nip nip nip. Hey, by the way, did you watch the Super Bowl? Oh, that was so exciting not to watch that. You know what I was working on? My spreadsheet. Dude, you know what I did on the day of the Super Bowl? I, I made a a a a lengthy Dude. video about the nature of power on Super Bowl Sunday. So I Wait. I contributed towards the the evangelism of liberty. On the same day that I watched the Super Bowl. See, you can watch When you the watch Super the Bowl. Super Bowl, tell the truth now. Did you cry? I cried. I Did you cry? I was really surprised at how I reacted. Okay, so let's some background here because this is important. Oh my god, you I cried. I don't just want to float this out there. Okay. He cried to a bunch of guys in tight pants running I, around slapping each other on the ass. I don't want to leave it at that. I wow. I I have been watching the Philadelphia Eagles for 40 years. Okay. For so years before too I got long. The, for, what's that? Just I keep mean, going, keep going. I've been watching for 40 years. During those 40 years, I have seen heartache, woe, disappointment. I have just been incredibly emotionally invested irrationally yes illogically yes i have been totally wrapped up in the identity of the philadelphia eagles when i see that green helmet with them little wings man i'm like there that's home that's me that's like that's an inseparable image that's paul that's all of it that's so I, it, so you cried when you saw superfly snooker take out hulk hogan did not. That, that's what, had that's no what you're reaction saying. To that. Because it's about had no the same. no reaction to that. It's about the same. Had no reaction to that. Did you but cry when old Yeller died? No. Wow. You're a horrible, cruel human being. Did you even see old Yeller die? Yes. He fell <laughs> down the cry. well. Didn't he fall down the well? When no, Timmy... they shot him. He was old and they put him out of his misery. So. That's what so people I do. Didn't... I had a scenario in my head, which I had for years, the fantasy. What will it be like when the Eagles win the Super Bowl? And how and has was, your life changed? I was going to be running outside. I was going to be banging pots. It was going to be, like, incredible. And, and uh, instead. You should have just gone to Philadelphia and burned half the city down like everybody else. I, I didn't have that reaction. It was a very quiet reaction. I just cried, literally. And it was like all of the heartache woe disappointment the 2005 super bowl the 81 super bowl 
the the the, the NFC Championship game with the Panthers, with the Buccaneers, all these horrible, horrible, painful disappointments. Randall Cunningham breaks his leg on the first game of the season. All of these horrible, painful memories all of a sudden were washed away. Did it change my life? Yes, I am a different person. I feel cleansed. I feel more energetic. I am I'm a different person because my team is a Super Bowl winning team. I don't care how their logical that is. I'm taking it and I'm running with it. So on that note, <laughs> high prepper is not about football. But that was important for me to clarify because he just threw it out there, that whole crying thing. But clearly I have a significant and uh, very manly reason. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, so <laughs> the six must have calibers for the eye prepper and and this is from the site of survivorpedia.com by the way really cool site i recommend that site for the preppers out there and so they have recommended uh top types of ammunition that have multiple uses and that's their, can I, their point can i guess i can i make some guesses yeah. you, before you start ra rattling them off 22 long rifle. Yes. Nine millimeter. Yes. Five five six. Five five six slash two two three. Seven six two Soviet. Yep. Slash three oh eight Winchester. Oh, I was gonna say three oh eight Winchester. No, they're putting that they're they put those together. Yeah. So I got four of the five. Six. Four of the six. six. Um, I know this is a long shot, but I'm going to have to say 30-30 just because of availability. Nope. 47 <clears throat> Wesson and oh, 45 four ACP. Oh, they went back to handguns. Okay. Yeah. So they did, uh, I guess, three rifle rounds and then three... Uh, hand crack. Now, what it's interesting. This is going to trigger you. Uh, it says the nine millimeter round is possibly the all-around best pistol round to carry because of its low cost and common usage. It's also the cheapest of all the self-defense pistol calibers. Are you? Are you? <laughs> yeah, I want to pick mine because it's the cheapest to shoot, not because it's going <laughs> to save my life. Just because I, I won't pay so much because the money's more important. So, so what are the reasons to Sorry. hoard ammo? Uh, uh, what are the reasons to hoard ammo? Um, first of all, because they go boom, and the booming they... is the first and foremost. Yes. What other reason? Second, what other because key you can, reason? You can trade it as as it's money. currency. Currency. So, so, if it's money, the kind of money that you probably want. I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you probably want the kind of money that most people are going to want to exchange, meaning right. they have something to use it in. So these are really good calibers. These are really good for that purpose alone. Well, yep. And the twenty-two is just a, a good critter getter. Everybody should have a twenty-two in their in their closet or the, whatever. Everybody, I, I you don't have said, a twenty-two rifle. Shame on you. You need one. Everyone has one. Five five six should have been slashed with the seven six two Soviet, and a three oh eight should have been by itself. So you think? I, I, well, they're distinguishing just the seven six two by three nine. I'm assuming. Oh, they so are. I'm, I'm assuming if they're putting. Well, I thought them you said together, seven six. I thought you put them together with the three oh eight. Yeah, with the 308. Oh, the 308 is 54, right? I thought the 308 was 52 or 51. It's 762 by 51, isn't it? Hold on, let me let me check, man. Now now I screwed up my head. I think it's 51. I think you're right. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, 762. Yes, yes, it's the it's the 51, yeah. So did they pick the 762 Soviet so and the 762 Five one as one cartridge or as two separate. Well, let me here. I'll I'll 
let me show it on for the studio audience and see what you think here. I can't let see me, that. You can't see it. I did send you the show notes. No, I didn't. That's right. So there you see. It says 762, 762 NATO slash 308 Winchester. When you have to shoot at long oh. ranges or through serious barriers, this is the round to go with. This Correct. round is the most common for medium to long range shootings. And also, any gun labeled 762 NATO can accept 308, but guns chambered for 308 should not fire 762. To do so, basically, I guess what they're really saying is get the 762 because you can use both 762 by 51 as well as the 308 in it. Right. So well, I had mentioned 762 Soviet, not 762 NATO. No, so that's where the Soviet confused. is. That the 39? Yeah, 39. The AK 47 round. The AK. And it's not yeah. on this list, which I don't right. know why it wouldn't be because it's it's another very common cartridge that it is tons of AKs floating around there. And that would be a good car cartridge to shoot critters in intermediate distances and um, to trade as well. Yeah, absolutely. That that should absolutely be on the list. I don't know why the 40 and the 45 are on the list. I'll explain. The Go 40 ahead. in particular, because most law enforcement for the last 20 years has been using 40 cal. So there are lots of 40 cal firearms everywhere that you could pick up cheap now that are coming off of uh, that were duty pistols. And if you could pick them up cheap, you can you should be hoarding the ammo too. Now, something that I would recommend, you know, they're saying six calibers. But when when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about six firearms. And I think it's very important for people to be stockpiling, not hoarding. Um an appropriate amount of firearms, ammunition, food, materials, telecommunication mater uh, uh, equipment. I mean, if you've got 30,000 rounds in your basement, dude, you got a problem. If you've got a couple thousand rounds in your basement, you're in good shape. Because the money you spent for those 30,000 rounds you probably could have spent on other things that would have gotten you further. Um, maybe you could trade some of that in an oh shit situation, but the reality is, statistically speaking, oh, those oh shit situations don't come all that often, and you're not going to be rotating through that ammo like you could rotate through food that you're that you're uh, storing. Um, but if you are going to prepare, there's an old old adage that I'd like to share. Okay, one is this none. Will be the closing of the of the segment and the show. One okay. is none, and two is one, or two is one and one is none. And what that simply means is, if you've got one piece of equipment that you rely on for your life, and it goes down, you're screwed. You always have a backup, one that you can either use or that you can cannibalize. For yeah, cannibalize for parts. So. If you've got a nine millimeter and you got thirty thousand rounds in your basement of nine mil, good luck. Because if that's the only nine mil you got, you got problems. You might want to have a second yeah. backup and one that shares parts. So if they both break, maybe you can create a hybrid. You know, if they're both ninety-two Berettas, you could pretty easily reassemble one gun out of two different guns. And on that note. I'd We're like actually that. done. We're out of time. No way. Yeah. It went, I'm just, time flies when you're having fun. I'm starting to wake up now. Jeez oh, you're just starting to wake up. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm about that. To this. So, uh, ne next week, we're going to talk on full auto. Why 9mm? Why are they switching to 9mm all of a sudden? Eh, there might be some, some Illuminati type reasons for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no uh, it's good. Highly like, go ahead. No good could come of this. No good could come of this. That's the setup. So, but can I, just let me make a really sarcastic comment. Oh gosh! If the you nine millimeter, give it away. no, I'm not. 
if the 9 millimeter ammunition today is so superior, then the 380 must be, like, superior too. Why not just switch all your guns to 380? Because a 380 could do today what a 9 millimeter could do then. And 9 millimeter back then was just, just adequate then too. Everyone yeah. switched to 380 because the new 380 ammo, that is awesome. Okay. I can't go with that. You're making me sick. Uh, <laughs> next week, uh, it's highly likely, I won't say we will, but it's highly likely that we're going to get back to Turkey because Turkey is doing some messed up stuff. And it's like for this episode, we're like, okay, okay let's just try to do an episode without turkey in it so that's why we chose corsica but man there is a lot of stuff going on i call it turk reich for a reason and i think next week we may be diving a little bit more into that i don't know what we'll do for eye prepper yet but i'm pretty sure turkey's gonna be in eye world next week well if i may just say that mr tillerson is heading to turkey at the end of this week so we will have some Things to discuss. We'll have some stuff to talk about, yeah. Yeah. So so I want to I want to let everyone know, by the way, that uh, these shows, when they're when I'm done on the, the Facebooks, I uh, unless there's sometimes some technical issue happens that prevents me, but outside of an unforeseen technical issue, these shows get posted pretty quickly on YouTube and then the show notes page will then eventually also have the audio podcast version of this. But if you like to listen to your shows on iTunes, we are on iTunes now. So if you go to iTunes and you do a search for iState, you'll find both of our shows on there. You'll find headlines you may have missed. Please stop that. I will, I will smite you. I will smite you where you stand. So, uh, Anyway, if you do a search on iTunes, you will see, or for, for iState, you'll see both of our shows, headlines you may have missed, as well as Is Daily, all of the Is Daily's, Is Daily's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday shows. Eventually, I'm also going to create separate show feeds for Is Daily Monday, for Is Daily Tuesday, for Is Daily Wednesday, and for Is Daily Thursday. And I want to say, get ready for Is Daily Wednesday, because Is Daily Wednesday the One True Niz and I, we are going to be doing an experiment. We're actually going to have a call-in show on on Is Daily Wednesday. And that's that's going to be interesting. But tomorrow, on Is Daily Tuesday, that's when we look at the lulls, Lulzilla. We look at some science news. And we ponder some stuff with uh, Bodhi Agoria. Agora, you, you, you know, I got to do my promos, dude. I got to do my promos. <laughs> and as usual, be sure you go to iState.tv and you see all kinds of stories covered. And these are stories that are that are focused not, not just on uh, on the fear porns. These are stories that are focused on awareness, hope, action. And yes, a little bit of lulls. Do you have any last remarks before I... I, I shut down this uh, lemonade stand. No, I think all night. of our audience is now well asleep, so there's not much more to say. I I got to get the promos in, dude. You got to do it. I know it's boring, but it's got to get done. All right. And on that note, uh, for what is Daily Monday, we will see you, Professor Rambo, and I will see you next week, same time. Roughly between 9 and 9.30 p.m., depending on when Professor Rambo decides to get himself ready. All prettied up for the show. And Ooh. you'll see me tomorrow on my Facebook page, Paul Gordon, for headlines you may have missed at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then is Daily Tuesday tomorrow night, 9 p.m., right here on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. And later on, the YouTube channel on iState. Good night, everybody. You should probably come up with some Italian sayings. That'd be better. Anyway, <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs>